Hey everyone, this is Ross, and if you're not already aware, there's been something pretty big dominating the news lately, and it rhymes with Miley Cyrus. That's right, it's... Coronavirus. 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 So, long story short, England is just about to end a second national lockdown. It's going to be for at least four weeks, so I'm going to find myself having a lot of spare time on my hands, and pretty much all of that is going to be in the house. So I thought, there's no better time than to get back into the fish tank hobby. I've been away a lot with work, I've been at sea for months during the first lockdown, but now I'm home for at least a month and I should be home more often after that. Um, so I'm going to set up a nano fish tank, a 24 litre tropical planted aquarium, which is what I do best. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the uh, components and materials I've got to set up the fish tank. I've been amassing this for a couple of weeks now because I had a feeling we're going back into another lockdown. So let's have a look and see what the first item is. So the first item I want to show you is the actual fish tank itself. Now a few weeks ago I saw this in um, Pets at Home which is the big retailer pet shop here in the UK and it got me thinking could I have a fish tank in my room? Have I actually got room? And I've just got this small shelving unit and I thought this is actually perfect for the top of there. It's the biggest tank I can afford to have in the space in my room. So it's actually a 24 litre aquarium which roughly translates as six US gallons. So it's definitely a nano tank, meaning basically a small aquarium. Um, it's got a lid, just a plastic or acrylic lid. That's gonna help with um, preventing uh, evaporation. You can actually lose a lot of water from your aquarium if you've got a tropical tank, just cause of the temperature of the water. So that's really important to have, and it stops the fish jumping out if they're that way inclined. Also got a few little holes in the top here. Uh, just for feeding and basically putting the wires into the filter and the heater. So that leads me on to the filter for this fish tank. Now it actually came with this internal filter and you see this little attachment here is called a Venturi and that sucks in air from the surface and it mixes it with the output of the filter so you actually get bubbles going into the tank so that's quite good. It's got a small uh, filter cartridge on the bottom here and that's just um, filled with aquarium foam um, so that's a good place for bacteria to live which recycles the fish waste um, so this is a good little option for a tank like this actually came with it and the tank was only I think 30 pounds so not too expensive um, but this is great I was going to use this but then in a few weeks after I thought the tank's small enough as it is I don't really want anything sat inside the tank if I can help it so I went on Amazon king of cheap items and I found this hang in the back filter um, so the good thing about these types of filters is it actually sits external to the aquarium you've got a small hook here which clips onto the side of the aquarium and you've got uh, an almost straw like inlet which sits on the inside of the tank drawing up the water goes around the back here through the filter media and gets put back in the tank through this little waterfall so that's providing some aeration as well. Um, so this isn't rated very high. I believe the pump in the bottom here is only rated to 150 litres per hour. But in a tank as small as this, that's a turnaround of the full tank a few times every hour. So that's enough for what I need. So small nano filter. Um, another piece of equipment I've got, which is essential if you keep tropical fish in the UK. Uh, if you're living somewhere warm, somewhere near, near the equator, you might not need a heater. But what I would say is, is that it maintains the temperature within a narrower range. Whereas in a tropical place at night the temperature may fall by quite a lot. A heater, firm heater, just keeps the temperature more constant in your tank. So I've got here just a cheap uh, nano heater. They don't have to be expensive. Uh, Amazon or any local fish store near you should do them. So I've got here a 50 watt. And this is fine for tanks up to 50 litres. Um, but you can't get a heater that's kind of too big for the tank because once the tank reaches the right temperature, it'll just turn off and won't do anything. Um, but yeah, I've just gone for a small heater just to take up the least amount of space in the tank as possible. And the last piece of hardware I've actually got for the aquarium is an unbranded box which contains um, an LED light. Now in recent years, LED aquarium lights have really come on. Since I was last in the hobby, I was last properly in it about seven years ago uh, when I was making all my videos on the channel. 
and I tried out some LED lights and I don't know if I was just buying rubbish ones or what but they just weren't the best um, so now I've got the money I've had a look on Amazon and this was actually quite cheap so this was £30 that's roughly about $35-$40 dollars over there in the US and it's just an unbranded uh, LED light clips on the side of the tank with this clip it's got an adjustable stand here and it's actually really bright I'll show you later on but it's bright white light which simulates daylight and it comes with this remote which lets you select any colour you want it's also got a day and night cycle so you can set it up so that it, in the morning the sun will rise so to speak it'll come on with a warm red uh, coloured, coloured light throughout the day it moves into white light and at night it moves into blue light to simulate uh, moonlight so that'll be quite interesting I don't know if I'm going to leave it on the 24 hour uh, day night cycle or if I'm just going to have on white light and then turn it off at night. So we'll have a look, we'll have a play around with that. But it seems made quite well. It's got actual glass here and metal kind of heat sink looking stuff on the top. So hopefully heat shouldn't be an issue. So I've also got some pieces of equipment um, for the maintenance and the care of the aquarium. So starting off here, I've got a choice of two aquarium thermometers. This bigger one you can choose to just have floating around in the aquarium. And bobbing about it's weighted at the bottom and it's got a suction cup on the top I've got the smaller one made specifically for nano tanks with just a suction cup on it and um, but it's a little bit harder to read so we'll see at the end if this big one looks too ugly in the tank I'll decide against that and use the small one but I've got a choice between two thermometers here really important for monitoring the temperature and making sure the heat hasn't malfunctioned and nothing's gone wrong there and um, filter media forgot to mention before um, so what I'm actually going to be putting in the filter I don't like to use the cartridges that come out of the factory with a filter because then you're always replacing those every couple of weeks you're basically a slave to that company you have to go buy theirs all the time so I like to use some polymer filter wool so it's just like a plastic wool very fine and that traps all the fine particulates so this you, yes you will change every couple of weeks it's very cheap you can buy a big roll of it if you want to and you just tear a bit off, shove it in the filter and that will trap any fine particles there. Um, so this is just purely mechanical filtration. Um, next we've got some fine foam. So this foam is a bit, it's a bit coarser than the polymer wool. And this will just sit in the filter but you'll never actually change this. If you want to clean it, take it out and actually squeeze it out in aquarium water. Never rinse it in tap water. Um, but if you rinse it in tap water, it'll kill the beneficial bacteria that's good for the tank's uh, almost ecosystem. So this is going to be my biological filter media. And I'm never going to replace this, basically. So just a few bits of foam, which should be enough for a nano tank. Um, next, just got a little aquarium net, just to catch the fish, put them in and scoop out any debris. You can get bigger ones than this, but this is absolutely fine since I'm just having little fish in the tank. So very cheap once again. Um, got an algae scraper, just a, a magnetic one, so half of this will sit on outside of the tank and half it will sit inside and it does what it says in the tin, scrapes the algae off the glass, so that's that. Got some chemicals here now as well, got AquaSafe, just going to add this to my tap water to remove the chlorines and chloramines and make it safe for the fish. Um, got safe start of bacteria, now you don't need to add this, bacteria should naturally colonise over time anyways um, but it's just a bit of a helping hand add some bacteria to the tank to get everything going and um, to maintain the balance of the bacteria in the tank got a filter active bacteria just to add every now and again just a, a splash um, I've got aquarium carbon so liquid carbon uh, this is a it's not a replacement for injecting carbon dioxide in your tank to help the plants uh, but it does definitely help the plants. People have mixed opinions on this. I've personally used it in the past on my big uh, aquarium in my old room. Um, and you'll see when I did the time lapse on that, all the plants looked really healthy. I didn't use much fertilizers, but I used this and it kept the algae out of the tank and it kept the plants really healthy. I just give it a little um, dose of that every now and again. Um, next, I've got an aquarium siphon. Now, I did have a siphon head attachment on this which is a wider nozzle um, but I've lost that over the years this is uh, just my old one 
and it's just a, a little silicone piece of tubing. Basically anything like this should work just to suck the water out of the fish tank but when you're cleaning it and uh, hoover up any dirt or debris in the bottom of the tank so just a length of tubing, nothing special there. Um, food for the fish, I'm going to be getting better food for the fish but I thought this is a good start because I don't actually know what fish I want yet. Um, so you just got tropical flakes, more tropical flakes, I'll be getting some pellets and things like that and uh, frozen foods I quite like and I've got some catfish pellets, shrimp and things I'll eat these as well. So I definitely I'd like some uh, cory catfish or dwarf corydoras, something quite small which can uh, scavenge on the bottom. So next I'm going to be discussing the decorations for the aquarium. So we're going to start off here with a substrate which is fluval stratum and it's nothing special it's just a type of aqua soil so it should have everything the plants need uh, to take root um, for quite a long time without adding any other fertilizers. I've kind of gone away from liquid fertilizers so adding that to the water because that encourages algae blooms. I'd rather just have a mineral rich substrate and have lots of plants which can pull it out of the water if there's any leached away by this. So it's a nice very dark brown slash black colour so it's very natural very earthy and I've um, got some plants some cotton plants which should help to bind it all in down the bottom. So that's what I've got for substrate a lot of that. And next I've got the hardscape so to speak just got three small pieces of dragon stone. It's a type of stone that's just very characteristic in its appearance. Lots of little fissures and holes so I can wedge some java fern and anubias and mosses and places for shrimp to hide if I decide to get the shrimp. Um, so that's a nice addition to the tank. Uh, next piece of hardscape is some uh, wood. So this almost looks like mangrove roots. It's quite knotted. Um, problem with this is it may float, I haven't actually tested this, it feels very light, not very dense, so I think this might float, so we'll have a look later on, see if it floats, if it does I might have to tie it to some rocks, or just bury it quite deep in the substrate, but either way we should be able to get around it. But I quite like this because there's lots of places for the fish to hide and swim around. So the last items I'm going to show you today is actually the live aquarium plants, which I'll be adding, and I've got a lot here to show you. Um, a couple of videos ago I remember talking about uh, Tropica aquarium plants that are now sold in air, just really humid air in these cartons and I'm actually a big fan of this because um, it does away with a lot of the snails and things that you'd usually get on plants that are grown in the water um, so I think just because it's so humid in there the aquarium plants actually do okay in here um, so just some little pots of stone wool uh, so in the next video I'm going to show you how to prepare all the plants ready for the fish tank and I'm going to discuss where to put the fish tank in any other considerations like that washing the substrate and stuff so final preps for actually setting the tank up um, but anyways I digress so I've got three lots of Sagittaria subulata which uh, in short terms is called dwarf sag big fan of this plant it's a carpeting plant so it's known as a foreground plant a plant you have at the front of the fish tank basically and um, I've had a lot of different carpeting plants before uh, Pagostum and Helferi, uh, Liliopsis brasiliensis. Uh, mosses are quite good, but by far this is my favourite carpeting plant I've ever had. All the other carpeting plants I seem to kill. I've got the dwarf sag, and this spreads by use of runners, so it sends off little feelers and runners, and new plants pop up all over the tank. So hopefully, uh, by the end of the year, starting next year, I should have a nice green carpet in the bottom of the tank. So that's great for the, the fish and uh, snails and any shrimps I might get. So I've got three lots of that. Um, I've got a new plant that I've never tried before, Lobelia cardinalis. And I just like the look of this one. I'm, I'm definitely one for trying new plants. It says it's easy, that's good enough for me. I haven't actually done my research on this yet. So I might just stick some facts on screen for you about this plant now. Um, but what I really do like about it is there's actually purple leaves. I just like the different colour dynamic that adds to the tank and it's quite a bushy plant. Um, so it says here yeah, it's for background. So it's going to fill out the back of the tank which is what I want. I want a nice bushy background in the tank where all the fish can hide and uh, make it look like an underwater forest so to speak. 
Um, here I've got Starragini Reapins. Now I heard about this years ago. Uh, I was watching some of Practical Fish Keeping's videos when they were setting up their fish tanks. And this was quite a popular plant with them. So this is a foreground plant, it doesn't get much bigger than this. Quite bushy. And I go so far as to say is I might put it in the mid ground, so the middle of the tank, in a nano tank. Um, so I'll wedge this around the wood I've got and that might look quite nice but yeah it's just a little bushy leafy plant. Um, I've got Nymphodes Taiwan uh, yet again another one I've heard of but I've never actually used it says it's easy here as well we'll see if um, this is actually true if it is easy to grow all these plants because I seem to just stick the the label easy on a lot of them. Um, this one looks quite almost like little water lilies be interested to see what that's like when it's in the tank. I just like the look of it. Looks a bit like frog bit or something like that. Um, so this says it's a background plant. Yet yeah, again, quite bushy, but it sends off um, long runners with the leaves on the ends. So that's quite interesting. And last but not least, one of my favourite aquarium plants. Um, we've got here Java fern. Nearly forgot what it was called then. Narrow leaf Java fern. Now the reason I've given away this really long container is it can grow that long but it usually grows about that high in my tanks. So this is mid ground to background plant and you tie it to rocks and wood. Probably prefers to be tied to wood. Tie it on with uh, thread or fishing line and it will naturally take root in a couple of weeks. So I've got the narrow leaf variety. I just think it grows a lot more bushy and I like the, the look of it a lot more. So I've got two pots of it here and when I split it up next video it will actually make a lot more plants. Let's wedge it in little fissures in the rocks and on the wood. Um, but it just looks really tropical. I like the, the look of that in a tropical tank. So yeah, two lots of java fern. And that's all I've got for plants. I lied. That's not all the plants I've got. I've actually got three more plants to show you. Um, so I've got two lots of java moss. They ran out of this at my local pet shop. So I just had to go off uh, just before and get some at a different pet shop. Um, one of my favourite mosses. Really easy to grow. You can grow it floating on the top of the tank, tie it to wood, tie it to rocks, tie it to pebbles, uh, larger pebbles and have a carpet. Love it. Pulls all the nutrients out of the water as well and uh, prevents algae from growing in the water. Shrimp love it. Everything loves it. One of my favourite plants. Taxophilium barbiari is the scientific name. I'll stick on screen for you now if you want it. And the final plant here is in a little pot. It's actually a floating plant, so this floats on the surface. I've never had it before, so I'm new to this one. And it's called Salvinia auriculata. So I'll stick that on screen for you now as well. Quite hard to show you, there's a lot of condensation in here. But it's uh, tiny little leaves, kind of looks like clovers. And it's got hairs on top of the leaves, which I'm assuming stops the water from pooling on top of it. So it's hydrophobic, so keep the water off the top of it. Right, so yeah, so that's everything I've showed you. Ready to set up this tank. Next video I'll show you where I'm putting the tank, any other considerations we need to make before we set it up. And yeah, so if you've got any comments or any questions, please leave it down below. I'll get back to you uh, in the next few days. That's how I'm gonna work it now with my new videos. I'll answer every question, anything you wanna put. Um, up to say 48 hours after putting the video on so I'll try and get back to most people but if it gets them all in a week um, I really get too many comments on my old videos to just reply to them all so uh, yeah so that's about it so thanks a lot for watching I hope you're interested in this new series leave your feedback tell us if I'm going wrong what you think I can improve on and yeah if you like the video please leave a like please subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, leave a comment just let us know what you think thanks for watching